the Lax Factor Podcast. Now, this is one I've been excited about. This is one I've been wanting to talk about for a while, and I've, I've touched on this player a lot, Michael Sowers. He'll be a senior at Princeton this year, All-American attackman. In my opinion, the best player in college lacrosse right now. And I don't even think it's actually close. I think he is, just like I think last year, Pat Spencer was hands down the best player in college lacrosse. Ben Reeves before him was the best player in college lacrosse. The Twarton is usually given to the best player in college lacrosse. And more often than not, that's how it works out. Now, I think the problem is going to be this year is that the best player in college lacrosse happens to play for Princeton, who is going to have a hard time even making their own conference tournament. So that's the problem, is that usually the best player uh, is on a team that where he's able to at least make the NCAA tournament and then make some noise and get get some eyeballs on him. And, and uh, you know, that's what's been happening at least the last handful of years. Now we have a kid who is leaps and bounds better than everybody else in the country. I honestly, in terms of, you know, ask you ask any college coach who the best attackman in the country is. I bet you seven out of 10 of them are telling you Mike Sowers. If not, nine out of 10 of them are going to tell you it's Mike Sowers. If not, every coach except for Tambroni might tell you that it's Michael Sowers. Um, so I just, I, I can't say enough about the kid that he can, he can do everything. And what he's done at Princeton is nothing short of amazing. He has the highest points per game average of any D one lacrosse player over the last 38 years. That's the fifth best of all time. But over the last 38 years, no one has averaged more points per game than Michael Sowers. And he's playing at Princeton in the Ivy. It's not like he's playing chump lacrosse, putting these points up. He is Princeton's all-time leading scorer with a full year left to play. And people, Princeton is, some of you may not realize this, some of you younger fans may not realize that Princeton is a storied, storied program with a bunch of national championships, a bunch of All-Americans, a bunch of Twarton candidates, um, the, the, all, all Americans galore. Uh, uh, Tierney, when he was at Princeton, they were a juggernaut in lacrosse and rivaled Syracuse and Hopkins and all these other big blue blood programs. Princeton was the shit, and now not so much. Um, so for him to be Princeton's all-time leading scorer a full, with a full year left to play still, that's pretty ridiculous if you consider who's played there before him. Um, the fact that Inside Lacrosse had him as a second-team All-American last year was a fucking travesty, uh, and it causes me to question who they have voting. Uh, no world in which Chris Gray, a sophomore, deserved that nod over Sowers. No world. Chris Gray playing in a tough conference, but playing for Boston U in a – Conference not quite as tough as the Ivy, and just he was he was that team's main and only option. Not that Boston U didn't have a nice team last year. They did, and they had some other guys on there, but Chris Gray was the bulk of it. The amount of touches Chris Gray got to get himself to that 100-plus point plateau or wherever he ended up last year, it, it they're just not the same thing. Chris Gray is not Michael Sowers, and, and, and the, the USILA got it right. They had Sowers as a first team All American. It, it is a travesty that Inside Lacrosse didn't vote him. And I actually heard, I forget which podcast I was listening to. It was one of the Inside Lacrosse podcasts. And, and that person had said, one of the hosts had said he had vo voted for uh, Sowers to be a first teamer. But it, it, it was a travesty. Freshman year, he went full blown 50 50. And I'm talking full blown 50 50. 41 goals, 42, uh, 41 goals, 41 helpers. 82 points and three game winners his freshman year. Shooting percentage was off the charts for a freshman attackman. 46% shooting percentage with a 76% on cage percentage. That is just next level crazy. Sophomore year, he draws a lot more eyeballs. 27 goals, 56 helpers, and 83 points. Shooting percentage suffered a bit, and you'll see that. We saw that with Pat Spencer. Uh, your shooting percentage after you have a breakout year goes down the following year simply because you get more attention. You get more lifts on your hands. You get you get more double teams, and it's just harder to score goals, but it's easier to feed. 27 goals, 56 helpers his sophomore year. Uh, four man-up goals that year, and you can see he got a little bit more aggressive in man-up play as they were taking uh, the 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 uh, even situation looks away from him, and uh, another game winner that sophomore year. Junior year, last season, 2019, Princeton, they had a rough year, 37 goals, 53 helpers, 90 points with two game winners. Last season, Sowers adjusted to the attention a little bit better. He improved his shooting percentage slightly, and he had two game winners along with another man-up goal. Uh, what makes Michael Sowers special? As a Dodger, he can beat you right, he can beat you left. 
He's most dangerous from X only because it's a little bit easier to feed from those areas on the field. But in the end, he is a straight up complete lacrosse player, as complete a lacrosse player as we have seen in NCAA lacrosse since Rob Pinnell in terms of his ability to score, his ability to feed, his ability to literally eat all of the attention and touches and run the offense. Nobody is better than Mike Sowers. And the, and the, the kicker is he's a known quantity. There is no secret in the lacrosse world that Michael Sowers, every time he steps on the field, he's the best player. This guy is drawing doubles, triples, teams. There's nothing you can do to stop him. It, the, the old cliche, you can only hope to contain him. It is It absolutely holds true with Sowers. If you need him to dodge from a wing, from out top, he'll do it. But there was, there's no one in the country that can mark Sowers. I mean, there is. you, you take all of the All-American defenders last year, you put them one-on-one -on -one with Mike Sowers, and he is going to murk them this, in, in a similar manner to how um, Pat Spencer murked uh, um, uh, Mellon for Syracuse last year in the playoffs. He is going to murk everybody one, in one-on-one -on -one situations. You have to double-team him. You have to account for him at all times. As a feeder... You know, his feeding, obviously feeding starts with dodging. So if you can't dodge, you can't feed unless you're Grant Ama at Penn State, where in which point you could just stand there and feed because Mac O'Keefe is crazy off ball. So oh, the only guy that could potentially be a better feeder than Michael Sowers, you could say, is Grant Ama. I would posit that's not true. I would posit that they are both right here in terms of feeding and everybody else is down here. But um, the only person you could say maybe better is Amet. But that's likely a product of circumstance. Sowers shreds defenses with his vision, and he doesn't have anywhere near the supporting cast that Amet has. Sowers hits a guy, hit, hit, and he hits guys all over the field. You know, so and Amet does too. But uh, specifically, what I like about Sowers is Sowers throws a really nice, similar to Ben Reeves, despite the fact Ben Reeves is much taller than Sowers, and Sowers is only I think five seven. Yeah, five nine. He's probably not five seven. Anyway, Sowers uh, he he throws that lob pass over the top. And, it, and it, he makes it look easy. It looks easy, but you don't see that a, a ton where a guy will just lob that pass repeatedly once or twice a game to an open guy, get it over top of the defense, and uh, he's excellent at that as well. He is a, a great team leader. As a team leader, no one's better. He's quiet, confident. No one will outwork him. That's the most important thing about a team leader, and that's why guys like Spencer and Reeves and Rambo, that's why they're so important on the field. It's not just what they can do in terms of putting up points. It's how they lead their teams and how they lead by example. No one will ever outwork Michael Sowers. As a team leader, he's every coach's favorite player and every player's favorite teammate. This is a fact. He He's probably the kind of guy you'd want to bring home to your, you'd want your daughter to bring home to you someday. I'm not going to say I want my daughter to bring home Michael Sowers. My daughter's only eight. But uh, he, he is definitely the uh, just all around, he's the, the kid you want in your classroom. He's the kid you want on your lacrosse field. He's the kid you want sitting on your couch at Thanksgiving as a possible in-law. I can't say enough things about his character and just how good of a person he is. Uh, my one knock, for some reason, and I can't get this out of my head, and I have never been able to get this out of my head since I started watching Workaholics, I immediately just see Michael Sowers and I think, Adam Devine from Workaholics. I don't know why. Uh, I think it might have been the haircut in one of his early editions or one of his old photos, but I do think that he looks a little bit like uh, Adam from Workaholics. And now that brings us kind of to the, the whole point of this video is why Sowers won't win the Tuartan in 2020. I think that he should win the Tuartan in 2020, and I think that if the Tuartan got it right, no matter how Princeton finishes up this year, um, you, I know that Michael Sowers is going to be, as long as he stays healthy, he's going to have 90 plus to hundred plus points on a team that probably is going to struggle. I say struggle. They're going to get a bunch of wins. They're just not going to be able to get enough wins in conference to make it to their conference tournament. And then at large wise, you're going to lose a couple of those conference games and you're not going to get an at large bid either. So I think that that they're going to finish further fourth or worst in the Ivy. That's kind of where people have them. And in this day and age, you need to make the tournament to, you know, get yourself into consideration for really winning the Twart. And he's going to be on the watch list. He'll probably, I mean, I think 100% he's going to be a finalist. I just don't think he's going to win it in the end because of the lack of the playoff appearance. Now, why I think he's better than everyone else's choice for player of the year, which I presume most are going to, to put Grant Amet in that spot. I, when I pick it in the beginning of the year, uh, this upcoming year, when I pick who I think it's going to be, I'm going to pick Grant Amet because realistically, I think he's the one who's going to win it. But the reality is, and I think I even said earlier in the year that I picked Pat Spencer, even though I thought that he, you know, there were other players that may have been actually better players. He proved me wrong by the end of the year. Pat Spencer was the best player in, in the country for sure. But um, I think Amen's going to win it 
just because I think Penn State is a better team. Uh, Penn State's going to make the tournament. Penn State probably should make the Final Four, if not the finals. I think anything short of a finals appearance for Penn State is going to be considered a failure by everyone within that that organization, for sure. So, you know, Sowers can equally murk everybody. Sowers is going to be, Sowers is far more dangerous than Ament, I think, overall. I think that Sowers is probably going to be the number one pick in, you would think, in both leagues, the MLL and the PLL, unless, as Kark said, uh, circumstance dictates that they might need an Ament like feeder. But I, I'd argue that even if you needed a feeder on your offense, that you'd probably pick Sowers if you were just trying to pick the best player overall that could, could fit the need. But uh, overall, if I had to pick between Amet and Sowers, and if this was your pick and you're building a team, let's say you're playing pickup and you've got the number one draft pick, you're going to build your franchise around this guy, and the two guys you had to pick between were Amet and Sowers, 99 out of 100 coaches are going to pick Michael Sowers. I, I truly believe that. I'm not not trying to dump on Grant Amet in any way. Grant Amet, in my opinion, is the second best player in the country, and he is a filthy lacrosse player. He's going to have a great pro career. I'm just saying Mike Sowers is that good. He's that much better, in my opinion, than everybody else that they put on the field. In closing, Sowers, he can do it all, He's and he's done it all quietly. You don't see him throwing behind-the-back feeds, shooting behind the back. It was He's a coach's kid, so it's been ingrained into in his head from the beginning. Do it the right way. Very West Jenny. For you upstate guys, a very West old-school West Jenny kind of way. You're just going to fall in line. You're not going to do anything stupid, and you're going to do everything the right way. That's Mike Sowers. Without flash, you know, and with his jeans wore high and tight, Tom Segura. Uh, kid can score. Kid can feed. Kid can lean a team lead a team. And in the end, you may even end up being glad to have him as a son-in-law someday. So Michael Sowers, I hope that the lacrosse world gets it right. You should be a first team All-American across the board. You should be probably the winner of the Twarton, assuming you stay healthy and you put up a bunch of points. And uh, even if other people don't acknowledge it out loud, this guy will. Michael Sowers is the best player in college lacrosse uh, for 2020. And if you don't believe me, just watch him. (laughs) 